Definition of test-driven development is really a test first development plus refactoring. You write the test, you write the code to make the test pass, you move on if the test passed, and then you refactor and you repeat. So it's write the test, make write the code to make the test pass, move on to the next test, refactor, repeat. So let's get into it and you'll see what I'm talking about. Much easier to give you an example. Let's go. I'm excited. So the exercise that we're going to do today is a palindrome checker. Basically, we'll create a class, and we're creating the project right now, but we're going to create a class called palindrome checker with a method called is a palindrome, and we'll pass in a parameter, a string parameter. If it's a palindrome, it'll return true. If it's not, it will return false. Very straightforward. And just so you know what a palindrome is, from Wikipedia, it's a word, phrase, number, or other sequence that can be read the same way in either direction. So we created the project, we created the new unit test case, the new J unit test case which, since we're in Java. And first rule, one of the rules of TDD is that you don't write any, any code, production code, unless you have a test that is failing. So to even create the palindrome checker object, we have to create a test to make it. So this first test will do that for us. We're going to assert that it's not now. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I like to have asserts in my tests. Some people will just will just forget about the assert because it's 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 not going to compile unless the object's there. So it's almost meaningless. So we'll create the object. Okay, Eclipse helps us out with that. Eclipse is great. Other IDEs also do that at this point. Um, I think the .NET one does it as well. C Sharp, uh, C plus plus, the latest 2008 should do that. Okay, so we have a green test. We have the object created. Next test we're going to write is going to be just a test that will help us to create the is a palindrome method. It's going to pass in a very simple palindrome. We'll use mom. Should return true. So we're creating the test now. One nice thing about Eclipse is it got it has autocomplete, so you hit control space and it'll do it for you. Alright, so assert true. Okay. We can create the object, the method I mean. Alright, we'll just give it a shot. Method's created. Let's see what happens. We should have a failing test here. Failing test, we can sort of test our test. Test that it's actually working correctly. We see the red there, failed. So we'll do the simplest thing. In, in test-driven development, another rule, you do the simplest thing to make the test pass. And what just, that's exactly what we just did. So let's add another test. Uh, this one will test when you put a string in that is not a palindrome. So if it's not a palindrome, it's going to return false. Remember, test driven development is about test first development plus refactoring. So even in even in our test code, we'd like to get rid of duplication just to make it better code. We can utilize a setup method that JUnit provides. Most J unit testing frameworks will provide a setup or a teardown method. And we can instantiate the test object in the setup. The setup will be run every for every every test method, and it will create that test object for us. So we don't have to do it in each test method itself. Okay, so we created a new test. It failed. Remember, let's do the simplest thing to make that test pass. Simplest thing I can think of is just let's check to see if it's equal to the input parameter we know is a block. Now, test should pass. All right, great. Let's move on to the next test. Now we'll actually get. Now we're moving on to the next test. We're going to get into some. We're going to have to write. Start to write some actual logic here. Pass in another one that should also return false.
Okay, test failed. Now let's actually add some logic. So, how can we tell if something's a palindrome? We said it's the same in either direction, so my let's let's utilize a string buffer. Let's create a new string buffer. And we'll take the string boss buffer, we'll reverse the string, and then we'll compare it to our input string. If they're equal to each other, we know we have a palindrome. If they're not equal to each other, well we don't have a palindrome. So we're writing the logic here. should pass and it does I'm looking at this code we can use Eclipse's refactoring tools to refactor some of this one of the really nice things about unit tests as well is it lets you do this refactoring basically with unit tests you have a safety net of tests so that you can change production code and still make sure that the behavior of the code is the same as it was before so we're, we're extracting into a new method called get reverse string. Also by refactoring and, and pulling out methods, you make it a little bit more readable. Most methods should be very small. They should just do exactly one thing and one thing only, and that's what we try to do. By doing that, we reduce, we reduce the amount of complexity in the code. We oftentimes reduce the code lines of code itself and we make just for more quality and better code alright so you, see, you can see the unit tests are still passing it means whatever I'm doing here is still working good and I put it into a one line we'll clean this code up a lot here test up oh, still test still working so let's let's add a really complex palindrome at this time to see if our solution is actually a valid one We'll pull up. We'll pull up a really complex palindrome from from uh, the internet. Some random site I found from Google. It's got some really complex palindromes. We'll write the test, and then we'll pull it up. Okay. Let's just pick one here. Okay, there we go. And it should pass. Good to go. Go, go, go. And it passes. So, all done.